What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday 15th. This is our weekly review of our trades for the week that we do every week exclusively for pro members. So before we jump into our alerts, I want to recognize this week's winner of who got caught being hot in the community. So if I open this up, uh, this week's winner shared some great research, answered some questions from other traders, and asked some great questions too. So this week goes to Charlie Wissenant. Congrats, Charlie. You got caught being hot. And a lot of good engagement this week. Um, if you haven't been in the community uh, or if you haven't been in there in a while, make sure you check it out. Uh, we've got some, some members posting some really good stuff, including... You know, Mike continues to post his earnings trades every day, which has been really cool to watch. Uh, just other people posting great stuff too. So if you haven't been in there in a while, make sure you check that out. It's growing rapidly and becoming an, a really great resource for our membership. So let's jump into the alerts starting with Monday the 11th. Our first trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR, which is the real estate ETF. We had, an, uh, we had on an iron condor. Price breached our upside break even, so we closed out the untested side. So we're still holding the call vertical side of that. You can see prices has moved really significantly out of range now. And if we look at a chart of IYR, I mean, man, look at this thing. I mean, that is just a parabolic move to the upside. You know, we were joking in the community earlier this week that I, I don't think the, the market's allowed to go down anymore. I mean, look, that is just crazy. And so we're just going to continue to manage as we can. Um, the uh, In addition to that, uh, closing that out, we also added another kind of tight iron condor. IYR is such a low price symbol, you know, 84 bucks that we really need to squeeze in our short strikes to get the credit necessary. But you can see this one, price is still hanging out well within our range. So we're just gonna continue to manage that as needed. On the on the short call vertical piece, um, you know, we, we do wanna get back to a positive theta position. So we'll look to potentially either roll or just close this one out. But, you know, man, I've, I've just been kind of waiting for a little bit of a retracement uh, before we did anything. And, and like I said, this thing's just been parabolic. So give it a little bit more time and we'll manage as we see fit. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in DIA. So we had two sets of short call verticals. Uh, we got down to the point with our one in February where there's only four days to expiration. So we went ahead and just closed that one out. We could have rolled it, but we didn't need that additional short delta. So we went ahead and just closed that one out and we're still holding our other short call vertical. And so if we take a look at that, you can see, you know, the Dow has been strong as well. Price has moved out of the range here. So just holding on to that. I do want to look to add another iron condor. Remember, this is a short call vertical that was originally from an iron condor. Implied volatility is just a tiny bit too low. I mean, if we just get a little bit of a pop higher, look for us to add another centered iron condor around the current price in DIA. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we, uh, kind of a similar situation. We had a short call vertical from an iron condor in SPY, just four days left in the February cycle. So we went ahead and closed that out. If we take a look at SPY, uh, we've still got two pieces on here. So we've got our short call vertical that's left from the uh, piece that we uh, closed out the untested side. You can see prices moved a little bit out of range there. So just hoping for a little bit of a downside to get back into range. And then we've also got another full iron condor uh, where you can see prices moved up from the center, but still well within range. So nothing else to do on that at this point. Next trade was a opening adjusting trade in SPY. So that was the iron condor that I just showed you. So that was the very next trade. Then we had a, an opening trade in Baidu. So this is, uh, we like to do pre-earnings long straddles or pre-earnings long strangles. In this, in this case, we, uh, we widened out our strikes a little bit to lessen the amount of capital and the testing showed a little bit better results uh, with widening the strike. So look for about a 20% profit here. Uh, it looked like price was moving up and we we're going to be able to knock that out fairly quickly if we just got another up day 
uh, but price reversed this morning. So if we look at Baidu, it's come right back into center. So we're down a little bit on this trade and I'll show you what I was talking about. You know, we we're this morning, we we're up here and you know, it looked like price may continue higher. And if we just got up to around this, I just set these lines on the chart. If it got up to about there, that would have been a point of potentially exiting for a nice profit. But price reversed, uh, going against the market. Baidu's down over 2.5% today, while the rest of the market is up around a percent, uh, depending on what index you're looking at. Um, so anyway, we're just going to hold this one. We've got earnings coming up on the 21st, February 21st, after the market close. So we definitely want to be out of the trade by then. Uh, so we'll see if we can get a little bit of a move either down or back up uh, to get a little bit of profit before we jump out of that one. Next trade, closing trade in Netflix. So we had a short put vertical on in Netflix, booked over 40% of max profit in just five days on that one. Uh, we originally put this on just to kind of balance our portfolio, get a little bit of, little bit of long delta in there. And we did, uh, we, it moved up nicely and we were able to book a nice profit in Netflix. Uh, speaking of our portfolio balance, we've got, we're at about three and a half to one on our short delta versus theta ratio. Um, our, our, partly because our theta numbers were getting so small, we've been taking trades off, making adjustments, with, which reduces our overall theta a lot of times. And so our theta numbers are low. And because of the continued up move, we continue to acquire a little bit more and more short delta as the market moves up. So we went ahead and uh, anyway, we closed that one out, booked a nice profit, but we're at about three and a half to one. I'd like to stay around between two and three at this point. We're not really at any kind of major major market extremes, although the market has been just rallying. And in fact, let's just take a look at a chart of the S&P to get an idea of, of what it's been doing since the beginning of the year. I mean, look at that. I mean, just very little pullbacks here and there. So uh, hopefully we can get some two-sided action pretty soon. That'll do a couple things for us. That'll help our short delta if we just get a little bit of a retracement and it will create some volatility in the market. So hopefully get some of these symbols that are hovering in the lower IV range to get a pop in implied volatility, which will give us the opportunity to enter new positions as well. So that would be good all across the board. Next trade was a closing trade in Snap, which is Snapchat. Booked over 45% of max profit in just eight days. This was a... Uh, and that should not be short put vertical. We just did naked short puts in there. And that was a post earnings short put play. So if we take a look at a chart of Snap, what you'll see here is after earnings, they uh, had a good earnings announcement, moved, the price moved beyond the expected move. So what we like to do there is sell puts or put verticals. In this case, we just we just sold naked puts with the anticipation that price is going to grind sideways to higher, which is what it did. It took a little bit of heat after the first day and then popped higher. And we, we went ahead and exited uh, for a nice profit of over 45% of max profit on that one. So we're at a snap. Next trade, closing trade in EWW. Closed out our short strangle. Had to make several adjustments on EWW and just stayed mechanical and booked a really nice profit on that trade. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in XLV. So we got down to the point where we were holding a couple positions still in February. This was right on the break even point. So if we would have just got a small move down, we would have we could have closed this, booked a profit. Ended up moving a little bit higher, so we went ahead and rolled to keep that short delta exposure and extend duration on that trade. So we moved that into March with 30 days to expiration. Kept the same strikes and picked up a little bit of a credit on that roll. So if we look at XLV, it since has gone up a pretty decent amount. So it's now out of our range a little bit, but just holding this for some of that short delta exposure. Hopefully we get back into range and can book a profit on that one. Next trade was an opening trade in EWW. So we jumped back in. Implied volatility stayed uh, at a decent level. Is it IV percentile? Is it 62 at that time? So we're, we, we're in kind of no man's land right now where March had 29 days to expiration. So under, under that 30-day mark that we like to get in. And April had over 60 
you know, we had, we'd like to be within that 30 to 60. In this case, we opted to go with April, start building our positions out in April. Uh, at that point, it had 63 days to expiration. And so if we look at EWW, you can see still very centered here. Not much movement uh, since we put that on just yesterday. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Ford slash ES. So this was our last February position. And we went ahead and we held this one. All, we were already at kind of uh, the max loss uh, on this piece of the trade. And with the futures, you're not going to get assigned until expiration date. So there's no issue with, with holding in the money positions in futures in the ES. And that's why one of the reasons why we just held on. Just in case there was a, hu you know, a, a dynamic move lower. Uh, we were just kind of holding on to that as a little bit of a lottery ticket, but got down to expiration, wanted to keep this one on as one of our short Delta hedges. And so we went ahead and in this case, we, we went ahead and skipped over March and rolled straight to April with 62 day, 63 days to expiration at that point. And, uh, uh, so that's where we're at on that one. So let's take a look. And you can see the price after the rolls moved up a little bit, but still within range. So again, just holding that for that short delta exposure. Next trade was an opening trade. So these are today's trades. On Friday, we did an iron condor in NVIDIA. And, um, and we're targeting 30 to 40% of max profit there. They just announced earnings last night. And so, uh, but we the, the implied volatility crush did happen but IV percentile still hanging out above that 50 level when we put this on. And so we went ahead and we were looking for, you know, there's a lot of symbols that are starting to get lower and lower implied volatility. So we're really searching. Uh, we, we prefer to do sell premium iron condors, short strangles. We prefer to do that in ETFs or futures first. But if there's nothing available and we're looking to enter new positions, we'll look at stocks next. And we don't like to deal with the earnings announcements and so forth, but with NVIDIA just announcing earnings, we're not going to have to deal with that for another quarter. And implied volatility was still a little bit uh, elevated. It's already gone down to 48. We put this on when it was at 54. And so just holding that, hopefully price stabilizes and we can continue to collect some theta on NVIDIA. And lastly, we did another opening trade where we sold some more premium, in this case in forward slash 6B, which is the British pound. And as I mentioned, we did a strangle, but you could also look at iron condors if you wanted to define your risk, which I know a couple of members did so. Uh, if we look at FXB, which is the corresponding ETF, to get a good read on the implied volatility, see implied volatility is still nice and high, popped up to 76 and so we went ahead and sold some premium in forward slash 6B. And so you can see that's that's pretty well right where we put it on. And so just waiting for some time to pass in 6B. Uh, I mentioned this in the community earlier this week, but um, if we take a look, uh, they just released the April and May option cycles uh, before when I was, even though implied volatility was high earlier this week, I did not put on a position because there was the March options with less than 30 days to expiration. And then there was June with 112, but they just released these April and May cycles, which is great. So we went ahead and jumped into the April cycle with 49 days to expiration. And I talk about, I've talked about this quite a bit, but keep in mind, this is on toss. Uh, think or swim. If you are trading on Tastyworks, they label the expiration months on futures a little bit differently. So always pay attention to the days to expiration. And I always post those in the alert so that you know which cycle we are dealing with. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. Oil's moving up uh, nicely today, up over a percent and a half. Here's the aggregate of both of our both both of our pieces. We've got um, you know pretty well centered within the two. Let's separate these and look at them separately. Let me reset this so I can check the appropriate boxes. So we've got the 53 call, 58 put. This inverted strangle. You can see we're we're well over 50% of max profit. And what I'm going to look to do is early next week on one of these, 
I will, you know, we've got 28 days to expiration. So it's not like we're down to that 21 days to expiration yet of where we like to roll these, these strangles, but I'm going to roll one of them and kind of spread out our rolls uh, because the next expiration cycle, which in oil would be the May with 60, now we're under that 60 days to expiration. So I'm going to go ahead and roll one of those out from April out to May. And so you'll get alert and alert for that early next week. Um, the uh, uh, so anyway, so they're pretty centered here, and we're making making good money back in oil, getting back from that massive move that it had uh, late last year. And then this one too, uh, still very centered. So just gonna roll one of these. We'll, we'll probably roll the more narrow one, which is this one, the 54 call, 56 put because smaller price moves will really affect uh, that profit line. You can see it's a little steeper because these are, are more narrow. So this is the one we will look to roll and go ahead and lock in that credit, roll out to the next expiration cycle. I'll look at the strikes early next week, but assuming it's kind of staying centered here, we may just leave our strikes the same, or we may, you know, if it's right around 55, we may just sell a, a 55 straddle in the next cycle and just continue to get a little bit less inverted, uh, although we're, we're pretty close to a straddle right now, so either would be fine. We will uh, we'll look at those strikes next week, right before we do the trade. Uh, ES, I mentioned, Natty Gas is moving up almost a percent today at this point. Uh, we've got two different pieces on in here. Both of them are hanging out near the lower end of the range. If we could just get a little bit upside movement in Nat Gas, that would be a huge benefit to our trade and overall position. You can see, I mean, Nat Gas has just been a crazy ride. Had that huge move up in October, November of last year, then reversed and completely uh, fell. Um, uh, price completely fell and then looked like it was gonna rally back up to new highs and it completely reversed again. So. But you know what? I mean, we've been we've been managing just fine. We're we're managing back, and and uh, assuming price will finally stabilize at some point, we'll get back to uh, get back to profits here within the next couple cycles. Uh, again, I mean, if we could just get a little bit of pop higher between 2.7, 2.8, uh, that would be perfect. And but we'll just manage as needed. So we've got the two pieces there. Both of them are hanging out in the lower end of the range, as you can see here. This one's a little bit more in range. Uh, but again, if we could just get a little bit of a pop higher, that'd be a huge benefit uh, to that trade. Wheat. Uh, earlier this week, we were, we were, I actually had an order in to get to uh, to exit this wheat trade. Uh, never got filled. Price kind of reversed and came back down. So now we're just in hold and wait. I mentioned Baidu. I mentioned DIA. EEM. We've got this short call vertical spread. Just holding for a little bit more downside to benefit that piece. Uh, we would potentially look to add to this if implied volatility got higher, but you can see it's pretty low. So we're just gonna manage this spread as we've got it on now. Uh, obviously, if it goes lower, we can book profits. If it goes higher, we'll make the necessary adjustments or trades uh, as we see fit. EWW, uh, I already mentioned that one. We've got that short strangle. EWZ. We've got this adjusted strangle, which is which is a 42 straddle at this point. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, earlier this week, when price was a little bit lower, uh, I, was, I was thinking we were going to have a chance to potentially book this one and get out with a profit. Uh, we're we're pretty close to break even, even where it is right now. I think we're down just a tiny bit, or right at a break even on our trade overall after adjustments. Uh, but we'll just continue to keep this one and manage as necessary. Um, you can see. Yesterday, when price was right down here, I mean, we were at a place where, obviously, in hindsight, I wish I would have went ahead and booked that one, and then it just made a huge rally uh, at second half of the day, and it's moving a little bit higher today. Applied volatility is really low, so I was hoping price would just creep a little bit lower and we'd get out of that one, but uh, but that's where we're at on that. Still in good shape. IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF. We've got a couple pieces on here. We've got a short call vertical from a previous iron condor. Price has moved a little bit out of range here. Just looking for a little downside to get back in. And then we've got our other full iron condor where you can see price is hanging out near, near the break even. If we take a look at the value of the puts, 
you can see we're pretty close. Uh, you know, we could have made an adjustment today because most of that value is out, but I just want to give it over the weekend, see if by chance we could get a little bit of downside movement, get back into range uh, in IWM. IWM, of course, with the rest of the market has just been absolutely strong. And so if we could just get a little bit of downside, that would really help. I mentioned IYR, NVIDIA, I mentioned that one. Uh, QQQ, we've got uh, we've got an iron, oh, whoops, that's NVIDIA. In QQQ, we've got two short call verticals on here still. Uh, we've got the 166, 171, which is this one where price is a little bit out of range. So just holding this for that short delta exposure. And then we've got the 172, 175, where you can see price is within range here. So just holding both of these for that short delta. Hopefully we can get a little bit of downside movement. That would help those as well. SMH, we've got two different pieces on here. We've got our uh, one with two contracts, and that is our adjusted strangle here, where you can see price has moved out of range, and it's just been kind of hanging out here. We hadn't made an adjustment because there was still a decent amount of premium left in the puts, that's getting to a point where we're, we're needing to potentially adjust, but same thing. I'm just kind of holding this over the weekend. If price moves much higher, we will roll these puts up. If, we, if it moves down, then we'll just continue to manage. Uh, we're still in March here with uh, 28 days to expiration. Uh, so ideally, we'd get a little bit of downside in price. Wait till we get down to about 21 days to expiration and then roll out to April on that piece. And then we've got our other uh, short strangle that we put on to add some more credit. This one's got three contracts. You can see price. Uh, we've got some profit on this one, not quite enough to book yet. So just holding on, holding on to that piece for now. SPY, I mentioned that one. XLK, the healthcare ETF. We've had this one on for some short delta exposure. It's a long put vertical. So just looking for some downside to get back into range there. Uh, XLV, uh, I mentioned that one. That was the one that, that was real close to being profitable. We just went ahead and rolled it to collect a credit, extend duration. So just looking for some downside on that one. And lastly, XRT, the retail ETF. We've got an adjusted strangle here. Uh, 41 call, 43 put, so slightly inverted. Uh, still a decent amount left in those puts. So not quite ready to make an adjustment yet. Uh, but hopefully we get a little bit of downside movement there. Uh, now let's take a look at the implied volatility. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's close. If, if we get a little bit of a pop-up in implied volatility, I would look to potentially add onto this trade by entering a new centered strangle. And I would do that now in the April cycle where we're under 60 days to expiration. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.